Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to part six of our um, tutorial series. And we're just going to finish off the house and then look into a bit more of an advanced uh, texturing process. First, as we were about to do, we were going to fix this issue here. And the reason that is there is because if I turn off the subdivision and the mirror, you can see we have a face here that is unnecessary because when it joins, it's adding another face. In the, it's mirroring this face by mirroring it on top of where it sits. So when you're mirroring, you don't want anything in that middle. So if you press, well, I'll show you. So if you put the subdiv on now and the mirror, and we press X to delete that face, Bush. And also, let's just fix this, put a loop cut in the middle there, and control B that to bevel it. Bush. Actually, I'm not a fan of these roofs looking so uh, cornery, so I'm going to put a loop cut there. And the same on this bit here. Again, just don't want that corner to round so much. Okay, now. When you've got something like this, if I wanted to bring this to the edge to make it sharper, it's it's only when I get right next to the edge that the line becomes straight because it's coming from this, this angle here. So if I want this to be a straight line so that I remove any smoothing here, again, instead of going on that again, instead of pressing S Z zero to make everything flat on the Z. I want everything flat on the X axis from left to right. I don't want any variation from left to right. So if I press S X zero enter, I've flattened out that line. So now I can bring it nicely to the edge and remove that issue. If I put another one in, I'm just going to bring that closer to there, put one up here. As I say, I'm just removing that. The, uh, the smoothness, there's too much of it there. And there we go. It ain't perfect, but it's fine. And to make these uh, these frames look less rounded, similar trick as the roofs, just put a loop cut in the middle, control B. And now that's a lot flatter. And we'll do the same for these, this pair. And on this one. And I might just check how they're coming out of the wall. No, that's fine. Okay. So we've pretty much got the shape we're looking for. I'm going to add an, a modifier we haven't. I don't. Oh, did we touch it? I can't remember. A bevel modifier, which is just going to round off these edges because nothing in life is this sharp edge apart from a samurai sword. So we need to make that less sharp because shadows and light doesn't do this. So in your modifiers, because we applied the scale, this should work nicely. Under uh, we've got bevel. And then it looks silly. So under the amount, shift and then left click and just drag it back. Normally I go all the way to zero and then I come out. So I'm just adding a, a touch of bevel. And that'll be on any sharp edge on that object. Key. Super key. Okay. I think we can texture this now, I reckon. There's still more to do, but let's have a look at texturing. So despite what I said in the first series, oh, I never use Vupal Shane in. Since doing this series, I'm using this quite a lot. <laughs> so, right, we're gonna do some bricks, but this time we're gonna do something slightly different. We're gonna mix two materials. So I'm gonna bring this window over because we're looking at the shader editor more now. So, the shader editor, we're gonna use a brick material and uh, a noise material, and we're gonna use them together to give us the damaged effect that you saw in the preview. I might just bring up a little window just to remind you. And to do that, we'll, we're gonna start with Shift A, input texture coordinate. Pretty much every material is gonna start with a texture coordinate. And there's an order that you follow every time you wanna make a shader. A material, texture, shader, whichever way you want to look at it. 
but it normally starts with well it always starts with a no that's not true usually starts with a texture coordinate and usually ends with a shader this one is the shader you've got textures which are here textures like the noise texture and you've got the shaders so you'll start with a, a texture coordinate or some type of mapping input and you'll end with the shader so if we look at the noise in fact i'll just add that again shift a texture um brick sorry let's let's drop a brick in there brick texture and and now we'll just bring these together and we'll go from the uv so the uv output like in the first series and then we'll just drop that in base color it's going to look ridiculous of course as you know because we haven't unwrapped it so let's tab into edit mode we haven't applied the mirror modifier okay let's um, like I said when I said before you have to apply in order subdivision first mirror in this instance we don't want to apply the subdivision surface we do want to apply the mirror and we can because it's on the top control a uh, there we go we now have all the geometry we need so now you can't unwrap a mirrored object because it's only unwrapping half of the geometry it's no idea what to do with the rest so it has to be a complete set of UVs so a in edit mode select the lot u and then q projection and it sorts it at a treat and because this is the only material so far we can just use the scale and we're going to bring that up uh oh actually what i remember so under brick width and row height let's go row height 0.5 we'll match it to make them more tiles than bricks and i'm just going to scale it up a bit yeah I mean, we can change it as and when we need. Okay, so there's the bricks, and let's change the colours to a uh, darky, sandy colour, I guess. Okay, one thing about the brick node if you can see there's two colours, colour one, colour two, colour two clearly here, colour one clearly here, but you get variations between the two depending on um, bias. If I rank the bias up to one, it's only going with color two. If I run the bias down to minus one, it's only going with color one. So you want to find a nice medium. Obviously, at point uh, zero, it's a complete 50 50 mixture. So, you know, that's to your tastes, I guess. So we've got the, the brick node involved. Now we're going to just sort out the bump. Damn it. I'm just getting these out of the way. Okay, so Shift A, and then under Vector, we've got Bump, and just plug the factor straight into the height, and then the height straight into, uh, sorry, the normal straight into the normal on the principle to be SDF. And to me, it usually looks like the mortar is sticking out and the bricks are sticking in. On its default setting, so I tend to click. In fact, I wonder if it's going to be more visible on 10. No, not really. It never is with the brick. No, um, I'm just going to invert it. And now that looks to me that the bricks are sticking out, as you can see with this highlight on the top, because uninverted, the highlights on top of the mortar, but inverted on top of the bricks. That's what I want. So the bricks are sticking out. Okay, that's nine minutes, nearly 10 minutes. And that's a good time because when we come back to the next time, we're going to look at adding the second material and then how we mix the two together. All right, I'll see you in that one. Farewell.